Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. We're working on Casa Granada. This is page one, build one. Um, we are going to add uh, flaps to all four sides of page one. These are two and a half by eight, two and a half by eight. Um, you're gonna do two of those and you're gonna score a half inch on the two and a half inch side. So you'll need two of those. Then you're going to lay it down and from the eight inch, you're gonna come in one inch and miter uh, on both sides. So you're gonna miter um, from one to zero and from seven to eight. Okay, so that's a one inch miter across this two inch plane. So you need to do that um, for two of these. So I've done that and I've added my tape. Now you're gonna do two additional ones and these are going to be two and five eighths by eight, two and five eighths by eight. Now on this one, you're gonna score twice and you're gonna do this before you do any of the mitering. You're gonna score it half inch and five eighths, half inch and five eighths. So you're gonna have this small gusset uh, on two of them, okay? And then you're gonna lay it on your board and you're going to put a tick mark at two and six, two and six, and you're gonna miter from those tick marks down to your two corners. And you're gonna do two of those. Now, we're, these are all gonna fold on top of each other and I wanted that little extra gusset to help support some of the extra pages. So I'm going to apply the, the um, flaps that have the gusset. Oh, by the way, when you go to um, do your, your miter, I'm sorry, you're gonna put this in your trimmer and you're gonna make sure that you miter from the 5 8 inch score line, not the half inch, which is down here, okay? So that would have made um, a different cut. So you're gonna go from the top outside edge of your flap at two inches all the way to the second mitered line. So that's half inch and 5 8 So go to the 5 8 okay? Do that twice. And then make sure that when you're applying your tape that you're not applying it um, to that little gusset. Okay, I'm going to add the ones with the gussets as soon as I find the correct orientation uh, to the top and bottom. Okay, And then the two that are mitered from one inch to the outside edge are going to go left and right like so. Now when you're applying um, the, the flaps that have the miter, make sure that you're pushing it down so that the gusset, if it's laying flat, is, is revealed, and then, um, and then apply it. Oops. And there's, there's my gusset line. And then when I score it, it should stand up like so. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. Uh, the opposite edge. Ah, I didn't get it in straight. Shoot. I'm gonna lift it. It went in crooked. And I haven't burnished it, so it should lift relatively easy. And it did. Okay, good. Start over. Okay, I need to make sure that it's on the right on the right line. There's my little gusset. Okay, now we're gonna do the, um, the left and right, and I'm just rotating it around. So my top and bottom 
have the two that have the gusset left and right are going to be the two panels without. And you might want to dry fit this just to make sure everything's going to close uh, before before you take your tape backing off. Dry fit, make sure it's not going to extend past your pocket page. Everything looks good. Okay, now the way the way this is gonna close is the left and right are gonna close one, two, and then we're gonna close the top to the bottom. And you can see, because we've done this little gusset, what's gonna happen is we have this beautiful little frame with mitered corners, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and dress these panels. And then we're going to add to each one of these flaps, we're gonna add a six by six uh, mat, okay? So first thing we want to do though is cover um, what we have because we want this mat to go on top of whatever the designer paper is. Okay, so each one of these is two inches across, minus the gusset, this one is two inches. We're going to add these flaps at the one inch mark but again, we wanna make sure that we have our designer paper down first. So I'm gonna dress these, then I'm gonna come down and put um, a one inch mark down on each one of these four panels so that we can apply these photo mats. So I'll be back in a minute with our designer paper. Okay guys, I've made some decisions here um, as far as the designer paper. So I'm gonna go over that with you um, real quickly. So everything you see here is from the eight by eight collection. Um, this is the piece that goes like right in between. So I had um, two packs of the eight by eight. So I was able to trim off um, four pieces because the way this was designed is that it had one on each side, but not on all four sides. So I used um, two inches off each of the two eight by eights. And then I laid them in and trimmed them to fit. So I do want to uh, point out, as I, we did when we um, installed the flaps, the two larger flaps, um, or the two that have the more shallow miter are to the left and right. And of course, you're gonna need to copy that with these. So what I did was once I trimmed these down um, to eight and two, eight and one and seven eighths. I just simply laid it in here manually and put a little pencil mark on each side and then cut my diagonal. And that's how I came up with it. And I did that offline, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're just going to, to put your, your panel down. You're gonna mark a tick mark on the top and one on the bottom. So this is one and seven eighths inch tall and it's gonna fit on your two inch flap. Okay, and I did. I repeated that process here. So your slopes should match um, based on just marking this with your pencil. And I just noticed that I had some pencil mark that kind of went over. So I'm just gonna re remove that real quickly. I'm gonna start laying these down. So this is a new page design. I've not done this before. Um, I think it's kind of neat. It reminds me a little bit of what I did for Oz, where I had featured six by six images. Okay, I'm, I'm working on the one that's mitered. Um, as, as you recall, the top and bottom had the mitered ones. Come down just a bit more. Okay, there we go. I'm going to dry fit it before I lay it down. That looks beautiful. And at the moment, we don't need to worry about any magnets. We'll get to that, but we're not. Uh, it's not necessary just yet.
think I'm gonna take a little bit more off here. I like it. So we'll re-ink that. So when I put it in my trimmer, I did not trim all the way to here. I just took a little off at a diagonal. The image that you see on the base, this one, is from the 8x8 collection, so I just trimmed it down to um, make sure that it fit inside. Let me see, I've got some more pencil marks here. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna crank this around so this is the top <laughs> I had to check on the back side so again we're on page one and we are also doing the build one now this one's a little confusing as far as the direction because they've got words going all different directions but I'm just doing it based on the back side um, and these letters and their words but I don't think it really matters because they've got uh, multi directions on here it doesn't really it's not that critical which way it goes in. Uh, yeah, okay. I was starting to panic that I needed to put down a magnet, but we don't, not yet. Not yet, not yet. Soon. Okay, there we go. So these are going to go down first, and that's because they don't have that extra gusset, and then these will come across. And then you see how we've got this perfect mitered cornered frame. Pretty cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our 6x6 six six to each one of these. So again, when it's fully closed, it's going to look like this. Um, and this is the image that I chose to go here. And I just realized something. Oh no, that's right, okay. I didn't realize these two were different. I'm glad I put them on opposing ed edges. So when you're trimming the eight by eight, <laughs> apparently one side is this and one side is that. So make sure that, I'm glad I didn't do these two here. I did them on opposing sides, but I really, that was purely by luck. So pay attention to that when you're trimming off these two inch pieces and line the greens up um, opposing each other. It doesn't really matter if they're top or bottom, just make sure they're opposing each other so that you have um, this nice frame. So this is also from the 8x8 and it is going to go on one of these flaps and then we're going to be able to open it and we'll have another flap that has another 6x6 and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this onto the um, Six by six mat. Okay. Okay. There we go. And if you look at this image on the six by six, this is the most um, prominent image on the on the 8x8 so I took most of the trim off one side and then um, I left basically the top of the 8x8 here and then trimmed down to the table so that's how I got this framed out if you guys decide to use the same image okay now because the two um, 
uh, flaps that have the two inch miter on them um, are on top. I'm going to adhere this to one of the two of those. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do the top or the bottom. And I think I'll do the bottom one. So what I'm gonna to need to do is come up one inch And I think this line is gonna be almost there. So we'll see, I might actually just be able to use the pattern and it is. So if I go from the black up one inch, this line, this beige line is right at one inch. So that, that really helps. And then the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is find the midpoint here and the midpoint here. Actually, I wanna find the midpoint along the line I'm actually gonna adhere it to. So this should be the midpoint should be right around here. It's pretty close. Two, three. Yep, it's just under three inches from the edge. Just by a tiny hair. So I'm gonna put my little pencil mark there and I'm gonna find my center here, which is three. So if I line up those two tick marks, we should be good to go. Now, looking at this, I'm not sure this strip went in straight. So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure. So the other thing is these little uh, corners should not be hanging off the edge. So I actually need to come down just a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. All right, so I wanna take a look around and see how that's looking. See, this is, it's not where I thought it would be. So I may need to change my marker. Oh, I know why, because I'm pushing this down. This, this needs to be standing up and not be pushed down, and that should help solve the problem. Yeah, okay, so now I can see that basically hitting the same place on the top as it is on the bottom. It looks good. Okay, so I am going to, let's see, add my glue here, and it's gonna come all the way up. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna wait a second. Let's wait a second. I need to cover the back of this. Um, so I'm gonna cover the back of this because so much of it's gonna be exposed when when it's opened up. So let me find something to cover the back of each of these. And by the way, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. Um, ooh, I take that back. This is from the 12 by 12 pattern pack. And I just cut these into um, six inch squares. So I got four of these out of it, but I'm only gonna use three of the four. Um, so let me find what we're gonna do on the flip side. And I went ahead and matted these. So we're gonna need to cover the back of these too. So I'm gonna find that paper and then I'll be right back. Hey guys, it's me, and um, I went ahead and laid my magnets in, and I finished fussy cutting my spoons, and then I put some black cardstock behind them. And I've showed this technique before, but what I do is once I cut out my element, I lay it on a piece of black cardstock, and then I trace it with the fat end of my embossing tool, and that embossing leaves a nice line around it that I can follow when I mat my um, fussy cut elements. So I laid it in um, before I put it on black cardstock and then I looked at it uh, the second, you know, with a black cardstock outline and I preferred it, just makes it pop a little more, also makes this a little bit more rigid. Um, and I laid my magnets down and right now I'm trying to be patient and wait for my glue to dry, which doesn't come so easy to me. Uh, so I'm gonna give this a few minutes and then we're gonna place these two elements over the magnets to mask them. Okay, I've got our magnets placed. Um, they're both on the right-hand side, right lower, right upper. And we are going to apply these wonderful little spoons to mask our mistake. Pretty straightforward. And when I say our mistake, that's the real, that's, that's me, <laughs> my mistake. But I don't like to take these out because I do like to point out there's always a solution. You know, you don't have to panic. There's a there's a way to solve your problem. Nothing is too insurmountable. So I'm 
opting to put these in kind of straight up and down, um, but you can, you know, flare them any way you want. Okay. The challenge is going around the magnet because this is kind of a small surface. And actually, in retrospect, I'm going to hold this down. Um, tape on the back side of the spoon would probably be uh, better um, just because it's concave and um, you don't have to wait for it to adhere. You just press it down and, and there it is. With the glue, you can still use glue, but you're going to wind up holding it for a few minutes to make sure that it catches all the way around the magnet. Okay, so here's our second magnet. We've got a couple of options. We can put it in straight up and down. We can put it at an angle. Um, and I think I'm going to go uh, pretty much straight up and down. And I am going to use some tape on the back. Um, let me see if I can find some fat tape. When I say fat tape, I mean wide. To put just on the lower part, and then I'm just going to trim around it. And that way this will go directly onto the magnet and it'll hold tight. I won't have to worry about pressing it into place. I hate cutting adhesives. It's so bad for your scissors, but once in a while it's the only solution. Just trimming off anything, any excess, so that it's not showing. still raining outside. You can hear it. It's very soothing, very comforting. We're having a late winter. There we go. I like it. Okay, so we've got our tape on here. And then the rest I'm going to put glue on. Ah, you know what? I think I am going to put it at a right angle just to keep it interesting. Still plenty of room for a photo that can go either underneath or slightly overlap the spoon. Problem solved. There we go. So there's our magnets. Well hidden, and if you didn't tell anybody, they would think you did it deliberately. Okay, so that's done. And the next thing is, uh, I've got those two sides on. We're going to start adding the rest of our, hmm, I'm sorry. That's on the wrong side, darn it. It's supposed to be on this side. I did that wrong. It's supposed to be installed here. So... I am going to fix that. Or am I? Oh, no, no, no. That's that's right. Um, this is the only one that's different because the top is different. That's right. This goes this way. Dum dum. Panicked. Okay, so I'm going to do a one inch reference line. Sorry for all the babbling, guys. As soon as I find my Tim Holtz ruler, I'm going to do a one inch reference line, which I can't find right now. If it were a snake, it would bite me, I'm sure. Somewhere. Usually I can find it faster than this. There it is. There it is. Okay. So we are going to come in an inch. And that's an inch from the black cardstock, not from the designer paper. Just FYI. 
And it's a little frustrating because this is not on um, a straight line. Um, and it's not because of the way I installed it. It's because it's just not on a straight line the way it's printed. The, it's slightly off. It drives me crazy when they do that. And when I say they, I mean uh, graphic designers. They do it on purpose, but it drives me crazy. Now see, on this side, it's straight. And that's why it bothers me. It's like, if it's going to be straight on one side, it wants to be straight everywhere. <laughs> okay, so there's our reference lines, which means this is where our install is going to be. And we're going to pretty much do the same thing we did here. Is I'm going to uh, put some uh, glue on all of that, and then I'm going to close this, and I'm going to jiggle it into place until I'm happy. Okay. So I'm going to be very generous with the glue so that it doesn't dry before my final placement. And this is pretty straightforward because this is not directional. Okay. Oh, I, I overdid it. Mm, something to be aware of. Don't put so much glue. Don't go all the way out to the edge. Okay, I'm going to check real quick. Hopefully this is completely masked behind it, and it is. Okay, so that one's in place. So on this side, same thing. Press my corners into place real quick. Same thing on this side. Now i got to find my last. There's two. There's a couple more of those. I don't know where they're at. One, two, three. Okay, I'm missing one. I'm gonna dig around and find it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found my, my last piece. So now on the, the install over here, I did my glue all the way to the outer edge and we don't need to do that. So I put two little lines. I dry fit and put two little lines so that I can stop and not put extra glue here on the side still trying to operate relatively quickly so that we have a chance to um, shift this into place if we need to. Looks like it needs to shift over this way just ever so slightly. Shoot. It needs to come over. Should do it. That's it. Press this into place. Okay. So I was so proud of myself for how we were doing, and I realized I put this one on backwards. So this is on backwards. This needs to be removed and then placed here, and then we'll have these same four green lines all the way around. So here is the challenge. I laid that down with glue. <laughs> but I have confidence that I'm going to be able to remove this without doing too much damage. And I'm going to use my spatula to achieve that. So I'm going to go underneath my cardstock and gently remove this. And then we're going to reinstall it in the open position so that this becomes the B side. Okay. Now, from the one inch line up, we don't really care because that's all going to get covered with another six by six that goes here. So I'm not really worried about that. I am worried about going beyond that on the front side. So I'm just going to take my time using my spatula, working it underneath my glue, and I'll get there and it's going to be really boring to watch. But when I'm done, I'll show you the result. Okay, so I did it and it's painful but it actually came off faster than I thought, but I did have a little bit of a, a tear right down here. Um, I think it's this part right here that got peeled back. So, yep, that's it, that little piece. So I am actually gonna glue it back on with my tweezers. 
see if I can't get that placed. So we just need a bit of glue here. That may be as good as it's going to get. Okay, it's going to be uh, not very obvious, believe me. Okay, so as you can see, I left quite a bit of designer paper, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to take off the extra layers. And then we're just going to open this up and place it as we have the other three. And sorry about that. Um, it's always a good idea to watch my videos ahead a little and not try to move exactly in the same pace. Because I'm, I'm building this for the first time too. Um, as all of you know, uh, paper crafting is expensive. <laughs> so I don't get to build two, I build one. And... Um, that means you you experience my trials and tribulations at the same time. Okay, I just mostly want this to be smooth enough that when I adhere it here, it goes on smoothly. Okay, now the challenge is going to be when I adhere it is it's going to go this way, lining up my magnet. So. This is a challenge. Um, I'm not going to do it. Um, what I'm going to do is when I lay in the top one, that's when I'll add my magnet. Yeah, the magnet's going to go on the second six by six. So even though I have a magnet here, it's not required. So I can really choose how I place this. This was found my top. This is the top. So I had originally planned for this to go like that. Which I'll go ahead and do anyway, but I, it might work. No, it won't. Because uh, this would need to be, it's just not going to be in the right place. I guess I could do this, see where it's going to fall. Yeah. So yeah, that's just not going to work out for us. unless I turn it this way. That'll work. And which way is that? Oh, okay, that works. Okay, that's how we're gonna do it. It's gonna go in my, no, that's not right. Sorry, I have to do it this way. It has to line up this way. And there, the magnets are polar opposites, so they're, it won't work for me either way. No big surprise, right? So that's okay, I've just got an extra magnet in here behind my spoon, and I am not gonna fish it out. Um, I'm too worried about doing damage. So it can just sit in there and mind its own business. Now I'm gonna put the spoon on the opposing side and I gotta put my one inch reference line in. I don't see it. So I probably still need to do that. Now in this case, these are the ones on, with the two inch miter. The, the glue will go all the way across. Let's see where that spoon is. Let's go ahead and get it away from there. So. Okay, I like it. Okay, be generous on the glue so we have a, a few minutes to 
make sure it's positioned correctly. Kind of like this. right on. Right on, right on. Okay, so now we finally have our pinwheel with uh, four green sides. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is find the uh, A side all the way around. So we've got the very top one, so we're going to need three uh, six by six panels and three six by six uh, or three five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths pattern paper. So I think I still have to cut those out, pretty sure. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, we are gonna finish this page up. So I, I made another design change um, decision while I was away. Now originally I had said um, <clears throat> that I'm going to put six by six on top. And for this I am to cover both of these issues and also to make it match this one, which is also covered with a six by six. But for the two that go left and right, um, in an effort to preserve some of my paper, rather than put a six by six on top, I am just going to cut my papers to fit the back side of the six by six. And I'm happy with that look. Um, it wouldn't look the same up here. Um, so because this is the two inch, is that right? Yeah, this is the one inch miter. So I, so again, the left and rights are gonna trim to cut, to fit the back side of the six by six. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay those in. I think they're both ready to go. Yeah. And then for the up and downs, we are gonna um, just add a six by six panel so it's a double panel. Uh, and you can add a six by six here if you want, uh, but I, I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> this page is taking a lot more paper than I had anticipated. I just hadn't thought it through. And I'm gonna make page eight the same, which is also gonna be another page hog. Um, yeah. So and as you know, um, Stamperia gives you 10 sheets and a couple of those sheets are cut aparts, so it's really less than 10 sheets. So anyway, the good news is my cover, spine, and inside liners are done, so the anything I needed for eight and a half inch coverage is covered. So everything that's left is for the inside of the book. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so then we've got the green on the inside. We're adding, and this is from the patterns pack, or the, they call it background pack and basically um, when I lay this down what you have on this side is six by six and what you have here on the brick is five by six okay Lovely, lovely. So if you did a six by six, it would just, it would cover more of this. That's the difference. Okay, so these two are done. Gotta burn most of my stuff down. Okay, now this one's done because it's the top and that's what we did first. So the last piece that needs to be done is this. And I chose this, which is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And it's just in keeping with this green pattern, keeping this page all unified. I'm gonna to have to do a couple, a little bit more planning because it's, it's possible that I can't do two of these pages. I might not have enough paper. <clears throat> okay, that's done. So before I glue this down, we still need to figure out where um, we're going to put this magnet. So I need another magnet. There we go. And I need a little bit of 
adhesive. I'm going to actually use my fat tape behind it. Uh, it just The glue doesn't want to dry on the magnet, so it always leaves a little bit of a gap. So I think, I think that'll be okay. Yeah. It's holding my right angles up. Okay, good. Okay. Didn't grab. Sometimes if it just wants to pull back up, slide it instead of trying to pull it straight up. I'm really not organized tonight, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know what I did with my pick tool. I usually have to dig through my trash. I throw it away about once a day with a piece of tape backing. There we go. All right. So that is done. So we're ready to lay this down. Let's get our orientation correct. That's right. So now I'm just going to um, put glue on this and we're going to make it match the existing 6x6. Six six. And then finally be done with page one. I'll, try, I'll, I'll be better in the future pages. Um, again, this sort of came to me last night before I fell off to sleep. And um, even though I mocked it up, I'm still learning as I go what I really wanted it to look like. So I kind of wanted this, what I was thinking about from a design perspective last night before I went to sleep was I, I kind of wanted this album to feature frame and a frame and a frame, um, which this page does. And I've got another idea uh, to create kind of a frame and a frame uh, on a different page. And that would be kind of the, the theme of this. There we go. So there's that beautiful frame. And then we've got this, this, and this. Isn't that pretty? I'm happy. Page one, we're all done.